You are now listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report. Flash Report. Yo, what up, everybody? Lexa drew up in the building. Y'all gotta excuse me because it took me some time to really filter through the Pelican season and in its entirety, as well as the playoffs. And uh, it's been enjoyable, you know, to tune in into the playoffs, you know, watching some really good games. But I'm glad to be back. So it's time to talk some Pelicans basketball. So this is where we at. No more talk, just action. The Pelicans need to be proactive yesterday. Look, we have some professional politicians, propagandists, if that's a word, that are full of a lot. <laughs> a lot. Um, got the flittery, fluttery words and all those type things. Look, something has to be done. If we didn't learn anything else from this season, from this playoff against OKC, if we didn't learn anything else, one thing we did learn is that something has to be done. Like Griff said, you know, can no longer be complacent. But it's always been that way. You can never stay complacent because teams are always aggressively trying to get better. So I was actually kind of confused when Griff stated that, you know, we, we can no longer be complacent. Griff, I don't, I don't think nobody else was being complacent. I think you were being complacent because you wanted to collect data on this core that, and this is just in my opinion, I feel like has run its course. It's time for a drastic change. Not just change, but a drastic change. And it probably should have been changed a long time ago. But the thing is, is that the Pelicans are at a point where they've been reactive for too long. They're not ahead. This team is behind. This team is delayed in a lot of things. You know, a lot of people talked about, hey, we need we, we need a shooter. We got a shooter in the draft last summer that consistently was not utilized throughout this whole season. We've talked about in the past that the Pelicans need a point guard. Willie Green wants a running uh, defensive uh, a big man. We talked about all these things, even with what Willie did have, and he did have something because we all understand the team is talented. He just did not know how to position these guys and maximize their talent successfully as a team. And that's another story. Um, because I mean, obviously, Willie Green is here for the moment, still. According to their secret contract, you know, Griff, Trajan, and Willie Green. We all know about that, but... You know, that's another thing that also needs to be addressed. But what I want to focus on is that, hey, man, we can't talk about this stuff no more. Like, the Pelicans organization is going to have to show this fan base that they're for real. What are you doing to make this team better? Because it's been a problem. All season, you know, there were flaws and things that, the team really needed to work on, and they were not being addressed. Closing in the clutch, 0-27, that's unacceptable. Uh, Turnovers, that was a problem. The energy, the way the team came out, they weren't ready. They weren't ready to play. No, the team relying on the smallest man on the team and Jose Alvarado uh, to provide energy, something's wrong with that. You know, uh, the hierarchy was off all season. Um, uh, The usage of Point Zion, it wasn't used consistently. We used it for like one game, then the next two games, you didn't use it. It's like, choose a style and play within that style and perfect that style and master that style. The inconsistent use of JV. I I could go on and on about so many things that this team was lacking in, and in the playoffs, it basically came back and bit them in the butt. 
It bit them in the butt. The organization knows what the team needs. It's almost like they're playing this waiting game, like hurry up and wait. What are you waiting for? While you're waiting, everyone is passing you by. And this should have been done a long time ago. Um, if they can do it for guys like, you know, Steph and Embiid, and they were injured, hey, you can do the same for Zion. This team should have been building around Zion a long time ago. I want to say this, man. If you're going to come out, Griff, if you're going to come out and say, hey, you know, Drew Holiday, this is your team. This is your team. There is no team in the NBA where Drew Holiday is going to be the number one player on that team, contending or not. He is still ducking and dodging uh, from coming out and, and, and saying that, that, hey, we're going to build around Zion. And we know the reasons for that. We know what happened with LeBron James. We know what happened with the Pelicans and Anthony Davis. They don't want to repeat of that let alone a player like Zion to be empowered and control his own destiny. Now, the thing with Brandon, obviously, um, I actually feel, you know, a lot of people have said, you know, get rid of Brandon. But one thing I want to say, I feel like Brandon needs to be put in a better situation. The same thing with Zion. If Brandon is not traded, I feel like Zion should be traded. One, one, one of these guys have to be traded. One of them. Because the thing is, it's not fair to either of these players that they're put in the situations that they're in. They need to be in better situations. You know, Brandon needs to uh, be in a situation where that he's, he's more in a situation that complements his style of play. Zion, Zion needs a point guard. I know Brandon was saying that he needed a point guard, but really Brandon actually did have a, a point guard. He just didn't play off Zion the way that he should. Um, you look at uh, CJ, Herb, Trey, they played off of Zion. They used his gravity to the fullest. Brandon actually did not use Zion's gravity to the fullest. Henceforth, Brandon would get a handoff from Zion, pass up the open three, dribble inside the arc towards his defender, and take a tough shot, like a lot, in my 21 Savage voice. Golly, I mean, there's a lot that I can say about, you know, just with Brandon's interview, but these guys have to be put in better situations. And I know right now, because of the contract extension with Brandon, all the focus is on him. And I'm going to be honest, I don't feel like Brandon is worth the $50 million a year. Giving Brandon that contract will push this organization back even more, and you can't risk that. This isn't just about now. This is about down the road. Got to look at the whole picture. Like, these guys, and it did, this does have a lot to do with coaching, but I don't, I don't think, I don't think just chemistry-wise, synergy-wise, Brandon and Zion don't click naturally. They just don't. And that's okay. Let's not continue to drag this on. Let's put these guys in better situations and not force the issue. And I hope I hope the Pelicans do that, whichever way they go. Because uh, things aren't looking good with this, with this organization, man. You know, uh, you know, there's a lot to be concerned about. I mean, I feel like you know, uh, Griff, Willie, and Trajan, they kind of deceived the, the the fan base by secretly um, be, being given those contract extensions around. I don't know the exact time, but y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm actually surprised that a reporter did not ask or probe the question in the exit interviews, why was it not announced at the time that it happened? That was public information. And it's like, you know, there's there's a lot going on with this organization. It's not just with the players, but it's from top to bottom. You know, and really, I'm not convinced, you know, they truly know what they're doing. I think the direction, the um, uh, the direction of this team is very unclear. The hierarchy is still not clear. No more talk, just action. And it needs to be action that is conducive to winning. Winning needs to be the foundation of this team, not family, not culture, not anything else you can think of. Now, I don't care about that junk. 
winning needs to be the foundation. If you make winning the foundation of this team, everything else will come with it. Last time I checked, this is a business. And if you put a winning product on the floor, then it's basically guaranteed that you will put butts in the seats. So why not go with winning? And for those of you who are thinking, well, Lex, the winning percentage with Willie Green has gone up every single year. You know, the team was a 49-win team this year. Yeah, that's good and gravy, but was that winning foundation there during the playoffs when when the Pelicans got swept by um, OKC? Is that the same winning foundation you're talking about? Okay, so I'm talking about winning at a higher higher level not just regular season because we all know that in in the playoffs that's when you establish your team as being a contender not during regular season right now the pelicans are a pretender okay that's what type of when are you talking about i'm talking about a higher caliber of winning so that's all i got for y'all like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate y'all tuning in. I'm Lexa Drew, and I'm at y'all. Subscribe now and stay up to date for all things New Orleans Pelicans.